Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio. Uh, here with James Jacob Prash, live via Holland, and uh, where Jacob is really explo uh, exploring Tulip. Um, Jacob, uh, in your analysis of scriptures, what does the ram represent to you across the spectrum of good and evil? Greetings from Zutemir, Holland, Netherlands. Wonderful to be with you. What does the ram represent? Essentially, the ram has two representations in scripture. One, an unblemished ram, is a picture of the Lord Jesus in the Levitical sacrificial system. It's offered for... The ram has two essential meanings in scripture. One is the Levitical, which is typological of Christ, and the other is the eschatological, which is typological of a specific nation. Let's begin with the typology of Christ, of the unblemished ram offering found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 5. We read the following. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, If a person acted or acts unfaithfully and sins unintentionally against the Lord's holy things, he shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord, a ram without defect from the flock according to your valuation. In silver by shekels, in terms of the shekel of the sanctuary, for a guilt offering, he shall make restitution for that by which he has sinned against the holy thing, and shall add to it a fifth part of it, and give it to the priest. The priest shall then make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering, and it will be forgiven him. <coughs> there are sins not only of omission and commission, there are sins of what we talk about in Leviticus, burut, burut, which is referred to additionally in the New Testament in the Epistle to the Hebrews. That is sins of ignorance or unintentional sin. When you have a baby who just wants attention and that baby is crying, not because uh, he's hungry or she's hungry or because they have a teething or a some reason they just want attention and want to be entertained we don't think of it this way but that's a reflection of the fallen nature of man now the baby is not doing it intentionally it's just part of the fallen nature of man to behave that way it's natural for a baby in a fallen world to behave that way but it's still sin the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin now, we know the baby's sin is not taken into, into account until it reaches an age of reason. Its sin is not yet taken into account. Nonetheless, it does reflect the sinful nature of man, even in a baby. <coughs> the different sin offerings are all pictures of Christ, as most of you know. The Paschal Lamb, the say Pesach, the Yom Kippur scapegoat, is a picture of the atonement of Christ, also having to do with the sins committed in ignorance. But then there is sin that is not exactly so much of ignorance that we didn't know was a sin, but something that we do unintentionally that is a sin. All sin separates from God. The ram was the sacrifice that prefigures, foreshadows that aspect of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that atones for unintentional sin. <coughs> the guilt is still there. It's just not appropriated by terms of deliberate intention. But Jesus still had to die for that sin. Any sin separates from God. So just as the turtle dove prefigures one aspect, and the lamb, another aspect, and the young kipper goat, another aspect, so the ram is another aspect still. It has to do with the efficaciousness of the blood and atonement of Jesus for unintentional sin. Now, eschatologically, it represents in Daniel chapter 8, the Media Persian Empire with the two horns the kings of Media and the kings of Persia, the horns corresponding to the monarchs of Media and Persia. Um, 
the Persians being the ancestors of the modern Iranians and the Medes being the forefathers of the modern Kurds, the two horns, who of course fight the ram. Those are the two meanings of ram and biblical imagery. I would also point out that the association of these animals with nations, such as goats and so forth, are confirmed as being popularly known even in other cultures and civilizations by archaeology. I've seen excavations in Macedonia where the goat, even in Greek symbolism, represented Greece and so forth. So these things were somewhat popularly known, it would appear, as Daniel uses them. So you have the eschatological typology of the ram, which has to do with the nation of Media Persia, which comes into play very importantly because of the prophecies of Isaiah and so forth. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church. Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.